get stuck in with some SnowRunner and Mandra updates gameplay, courtesy of A Tribe Called Cars, plus what it's all about. Update 7.0 is finally here, not joking, no really. That means we can now initiate the download, grab a tea or coffee, and wait until we can cruise around in the latest SnowRunner map, known as a Mandra, formerly Afrikander. From what I know, because I avoid playing new stuff on the public test server, is that Amandra is a tough map, which is what I would hope from another snow-based offering from Russia's Kola Peninsula region. Honestly, I've already tipped my as of 73210 twice and got it stuck once. This is challenging to say the least. Now before I go on, I promise some official A Tribe Called Cars merch to whoever guessed the correct release date, which was the 7th of September 2020. Yeah, technically it might be the 6th or whatever, depending on your time zone. I shall now see who guessed correctly or came closest. So anyway, I've talked about the new stuff before, but this time it's official. Here's a rundown for those who want to pass the time while it's updating, or perhaps are curious what to expect, or both. Spoiler alert. It's around 4GB on PC and between 12 and 13-ish on Xbox and PS4. Restart your console if it's not initiating and or try to run SnowRunner. The latter worked for me on Xbox. This is an update for Season Pass owners, although those who play with someone who has the update can check out the new stuff, plus trials, bug fixes and the new Michigan contracts are for everyone. New truck alert, cue the air horns. The TUZ-108 Warthog is an add-on friendly off-roader and its raised suspension upgrade lives in a Mandra. I'll be talking more about upgrades in a second and all the most recent trucks will be getting videos. So subscribe if that's of interest. What about the Chevrolet Apache 6x6 I talked about recently? Well, that's coming in update 8.0, technically 8.2-ish, whatever. FYI, phase two kicks in at update 9.0. As I said, trials is something everyone can enjoy, not just those fancy pants season pass owners with all that disposable income. These are custom timed challenges that take place on separate maps and you get interior stuff as a reward. More on this later. Update 7.0 Amandra adds two trials. The first is called Ride On King, which should feature the Tega, but maybe doesn't. The second is Lost in the Wilderness, which sounds cool. These trials are meant to be tough, and there are more on the way in future updates. One of my favourite scouts, and one I reviewed a while ago on the channel, the round-eyed TUZ-166 is getting some love in the form of a new skin. I'm not going to show it to you, but it's a thing. A new trailer may not be hugely exciting in theory, but Amandra's latest addition is the wide flatbed semi-lol trailer. Why is it special, Ben? Well, it's a five-slot cargo-carrying beast that, wait for it, works with the low saddle. That means all those heavy trucks that were limited before are now less limited. So go forth and use big trucks more of the time. Bubblehead, Nodding Dog, whatever you want to call it, it's now a thing that can adorn your truck dashboard, bringing constant joy to the cabin. There are also interior stickers and hanging air fresheners to cover the smell made after seeing those scary green eyes. PC players can tuck into interior modding. Please oh please can someone make a Tiger King air freshener or Tiger Skin dashboard. Obviously don't use actual Tiger Skin though because they're epic animals. Lifting scout trucks on things can be a pain. I actually wanted to put every scout truck on top of the airplane wings in Alaska, but it was so difficult I nearly threw my monitor out the window. But now all but the TUZ-420 Tartarin have a crane socket on the roof for easier lifting bliss. This is a particularly cool element of update 7.0 because new missions to enjoy in Michigan means we may see new tougher missions in other maps. SnowRunner has some fantastic environment design so it's nice to revisit these places, especially the one where we all started our journey into this empty and unforgiving world. The lack of steering wheel support in SnowRunner wasn't great, but Saber Interactive is trying to change that with improved functionality for the G29 and G920, which should also mean the newer G923 are reviewed on the channel. The dev has added camera controls with the D-pad, 
Meanwhile, Thrustmaster users can expect support for the T-150, TGT and TX steering wheels. But not my lovely TSXW I used for my WRC9 review. Although perhaps it will work. I've been meaning to make a snow on a steering wheel video for a while. A particularly cool part of a Mandra are the five new upgrades. We have active suspension for the Actian, all wheel drive for the Western Star Twin Steer 6900, raised and active suspension for the TUZ 108 Warthog, Warthog HET 10V 6.6 for the Ford F750, so no more lame performance, and the metal detector module. Speaking of, the metal detector module upgrade, similar to the seismic vibrator, lol, lives in a Mandra. It fits to your truck like a frame add-on and it's necessary for some missions in a Mandra. Where you need to find metal, one would assume. Okay, deep breath time because there's a lot to cover, ready? So you can now view your own truck's location in the player profile. You can now restart tasks and contracts in co-op. There's improved dirt particles shading. Mmm, sexy. Added active suspension for the Derry Longhorn 3194. Small tweaks for Freightliner M916A1 steering. That was a bit funky. Improved steering angle for Western Star 6900 twin steer. Oh yeah. Now the bug fixes. Owned truck's counter in the truck store is now properly displayed. Hooray. Fixed the bug with one of containers missing in the containers in the river task. Oops. Fixed exhaust pipe model for Cat 745C. Oh, I love that truck. Already using it in the Mandra. Repair crates on Khan Marshall are now properly removed when used. So maybe that thing will be a little faster? I've not tested that. Fix snorkel for Azov Antarctic, so presumably it can go in water. Fix the problem when players are unable to change bindings for the winch pull. Tweaked front wheels positioning for Veron Grad, Veron D53233 and Hager 6436. Fix the bug when ob <laughs> Fix the bug when physics was disabled for objects that are far from the player. Brackets cause cargo falling through trailers, objects stuck in an unrealistic position. So that's a good one. Fixed wheels falling through rocks in some cases, another good one. Fixed snorkel for Royal BM17. Colob 74941, fixed RPM arrow and sun visor clipping. Fixed the bug when deleting custom scenario save slots did not properly delete player save data. Fixed the bug when some vehicles had different purchase sale prices. Fixed snow flickering on railroads. Fixed bug when some objects on a map were flying away when the player drove nearby. Oh, I quite like that one. Fixed a bug when available truck info on a global map was incorrect for some players. That was particularly annoying, so that's cool. Steering wheels and peripherals. Supported option for input hints display. Brackets only wheel slash any active input. And supported camera controls with the D-pad on Logitech as previously discussed. Thrustmaster steering wheel support as previously discussed, improved performance while driving on breakable ice on PS4, and improved draw distance for rocks. Can't beat a bit of draw distance. <laughs> Lastly, modding. Can now play co-op with modded trucks. When a client joins to host with mods, all host mods are automatically downloaded. A player can switch matchmaking settings between the base game and modded version. Supported ability to add custom made assets to the maps. Added support of gameplay zones set up. Brackets, garages, tasks, contracts, etc. Added reference maps to the editor PAK. Custom map data from the editor will now be updated automatically when players go to the main menu without the need to relaunch the game client. <gasps> Big breath. Move to latest mod.io SDK, which improved mod download speed. And lastly, I hope you're still awake, added broken vehicle to both polygons so modders can easily test repair add-ons. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what you are getting in Amandra's update 7.0. I hope you found that kind of useful. There's going to be lots of gameplay videos from Amandra and, as I said earlier, some nice truck reviews. Because now the Ford F750 is no longer useless and the twin steer is going to be ridiculous with all-wheel drive. In theory, hopefully that's the case because I'm going to go back to container delivery and see if I can get an even quicker time. And that's it for this video. I tried to rush this one out fast so you guys know what to expect. Hopefully you found it useful. I shall see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.